Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new tactic review. This time it's the turn of uh, Mar Marcino Garcia Toral. 59 year old uh, Spanish manager, had spells at Marseille, Athletic Club of Valencia. Uh, this is second spell of Real, Bebel Real, I believe. Third formation is a 4 4 2. That's the one that we're going to review today. A bit of a break from the 4 2 3 ones that we've been doing and had scheduled as well. We had a few more scheduled in. Jose Marino's coming up, don't worry. But someone got down in the comments, suggested a kind of 4 4 2. So I had a, had a little uh, look around. Uh, I think um, Real Batiste actually came up. I know he's managing them now after we ousted them from Real, Villarreal. Um, but I think Villarreal appealed as well. I think what the players have got. I think it'll make a really good 4 4 2 out of that one. Try and capture his style as well, if we can. So yeah, that's it. I think what I'm looking for is slightly direct, not a great amount of passing. Use of the wide players, which yeah, they have in quality. Um, I mean, kind of Jeremy Pino, uh, Al Alchemich, I think he's called, is he a young Barcelona kid or used to be from Barcelona? Um, Biena out on the left as well. So it's really good wide, wide players, as well as the older heads in midfield. Kind of a couple of good, uh, good uh, double pivots there and Perejo. Uh, just kind of off the top of my head. So we'll have a little look at the, the, the tactic we adopted. I think we're due to finish third, I think. Uh, we'll see where we how we actually did it during the league and the competitions. Show you a few highlights as well. Then we'll head over the tactic, discuss the tactic, um, team instructions, player roles, etc. See what you think. Like I say, as always, um, just to kind of clarify as well, all I do with this tactic is put the tactic in, then hand over to my assistant manager and let him just do whatever he needs to do. So there's no kind of training uh, schedules, there's no set piece schedules, just as you see it. And so you see, as always, please, if you get a chance, if you are enjoying this content, drop a like, subscribe. I do say, I don't probably say this enough, but it really is helping the channel. The channel's grown bit by bit, and we are, I'm certainly enjoying doing these, and I think kind of you guys are too. So we'll jump right in. We will see how we got on in the league. Uh, we'll talk about his style of play, show a few high, uh, highlights as well. Outlooked in game, how it flowed, and then we'll head over and we'll discuss the tactic. As I go through, if you kind of get in the comments, let me know what you would change. I think there's a couple of things you could probably tweak and do, maybe it's a little bit different. Um, but like I say, I do like kind of you guys getting involved, and kind of a lot of you certainly do. So it's great to have that bit of inter interaction and uh, give me your opinion. You know, how would you maybe do this tactic if you take this on and you you, know, you have taken this tactic on and, and your saves? What did you have to change? Did you have to change anything for your team? Or I, I very rarely think a tactics plug and play. So I do like to know what you guys have done to tweak it and change it and maybe modify it a little bit. So we'll jump right in and get on with the tactic. So competition wise, then um, we finished third in the uh, La Liga EA Sports competition. Um, great result. I think we were due to finish third anyway. If I have a little look at the team itself, oh, yeah, I expect to finish fourth. So we finished third, better than expected, but very hard to topple um, Barcelona and Real Madrid at this stage, first season. And as I mentioned before, we didn't use any set-piece tactics or training schedules, which may have kind of tweaked a little things a bit in your favour, and we didn't watch the games in real time to make any tweaks either. So you could argue that you could maybe squeeze out a few more points if you'd managed it a bit better. I think at one stage we were pushing Barcelona, I think at the time, but they just kind of went on a, what clearly was a mad, crazy run and finished up the league on 99 points. We were somewhere behind uh, 12 points, the difference there. Yeah, we're never going to catch them. I think they were just obviously a little bit too too good. But for the first season, no messing about, no kind of tweaking, no training schedules, no set pace schedules. I don't think that's a bad bad finish, to be quite honest here with this tactic. Third, they have a little bit deeper into that. Do I have a look at the stage and see you know exactly what we've done? And I must say, for the first part of the season, I was kind of tweaking this uh, tactic. I wasn't getting the best out of certain players, being Biana being one of them. Um, so I did tweak a little bit as I was going through, and the tactic seemed to get better and better as I adapted it. So first half of the season wasn't great. I wasn't getting kind of I don't I think even Moreno up front wasn't scoring that many either. So I had to do a little thing, uh, tweaks and adjustments. So this could have been a lot better. Um, Point wise and certainly kind of goal scoring wise, defensive wise maybe as well. So yeah, Villarreal thirty. We played thirty eight, won twenty seven of them, drew six, lost five, scored eighty six goals, which is not a bad return in this league. 
did concede 40 years, a little on the high side. Like I say, that was maybe the early stage of the tactic where we were scoring a lot, but maybe it's conceding. But we were aggressive, we were in your face at times. And I think with this 4 4 2, there may be a case to maybe go aggressive in certain situations and adopt a kind of a more defensive, sensible approach. But we'll discuss that later. Um, so, yeah, conceded 48. Not ideal, to be quite honest with you. Not the worst, obviously, in the league. But, yeah, out of them, kind of top 10 who were up there were kind of probably the worst defence. So, finished the goal difference of 38 and 87 points. So, possession-wise, then, we were eight from the table. Like I said, not a team that is... Oh, well, certainly plays with a lot of possession. Quite direct in the passing. Not really too bothered about having too much of the ball. It's what they do with it that, that counts. A uh, very aggressive style. I say out of the wings, very quick, very like say in your face, catching teams on the counter. Yeah, uh, once that ball's won, so I wasn't really too concerned with the amount of possession. That wasn't the basis of attack, and I don't think it's the basis of a bit of Villarreal. Third best goal scorers in the league, so we were a team that was uh, certainly banging the goals in. I think uh, in real life at the moment, I think they do sit in third as well. I think they've had a great start to the season, so I think we've kind of emulate, uh, emulated that and finished in third position. Champions League spots never, never bad. So dribbles made then. This is kind of where I wanted it in for as well. We've been fourth behind Real Madrid, Barcelona, and Sevilla. With the players we've got on the wings, I, I want to create that as well. I think that's where the strengths lie. Certainly wing player, getting it forward, taking that ball forward, carrying it forward as well. You can see a Pino, a, 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 a Jeremy Pino, Alka Mitch. Sorry if I pronounced his name wrong. Kind of Biano on the left as well, although I think that um, assistant manager was putting Perez, Iosi Perez on that side. But either way, utilising that kind of pace, utilising them driven skills of flair. And I think that's where Real kind of lies with their strengths. Again, high-intensity sprints. Third in the league with that. I think that's where, like I said before, pace, power, flair, creativity. I think that's kind of the main strengths of the Spare Villa, Villa Real squad. So they've got goal scorers. They've got people that can provide chances. People that can carry the ball up the pitch. Like I said, in a 4-4-2 formation. See, it's a perfect combination. Possession one as well, then. We sit fourth in the league. Really quite happy with that as well. Feels like, you know, I wanted that ball back. Comes from that aggressive style of play. That's what Villarreal, they use the speed, the strength to get the ball back. Sorry, they win the ball back, then they use the kind of speed, the strength, quickness of the wingmen um, through the middle as well. You have your two forwards up top as well. Three chances, score goals. Exactly what, what I wanted from this tactic. So also, then we won the Copa del Rey. So not, uh, not a bad season at all. Bit of silverware in the cabinet. Third in the league. Happy Champions League football next season. For me, perfect season. Yeah, couldn't have got any better. Could have tightened the defence up a little bit. Which, as I go through a tactic, I'll probably explain. I would change things around with certain teams. Getting spanked off Real Madrid last game of the season wasn't great. Just take a look at the schedule there. 6-2 defeat at the end. 2-1, hoping to Barcelona. But we did beat Barcelona in the Copa del Rey, 3-0. So, although, be it maybe... Yeah, got away with that one, maybe slightly. So I think there is times where you maybe want to dial it back a little bit. Maybe it's a mid-block, which I'll, I'll explain. And yeah, rather than going kind of full, all-out attack. So we'll watch a few highlights. See how we played out in the match engine. What I want to see is quick passing, play out to the wings, control the ball, nice direct, not too much kind of Tiki tack earnings that kind of form of football. As you can see, we never had a great deal of possession. So I want the players to get the ball. Look for them players in space. Look for them openings. Get the ball out of the wings. Use our kind of wing men with dribbling, flair, creativity then. Pick out our, our two forwards and create chances, score goals. Very simple. Good old-fashioned 4-4-2 work. So we'll see here. Santi with the ball. Here's a back of Tarats at the time. Jeremy Pino. Out wide. Cuts in. And Alex Biana coming in there to look for the goal. Ian Iosi out on the left. This would probably be Biana and Iosi probably swap positions. Finds Tarats. Takes a shot. You can see I utilize that kind of wide play. Looking for the kind of runners inside. Overload in the opposition area. Exactly what I want. And here we'll probably concede. Here got Alex Biana running through with the ball. I think he's probably operating as the, the deep uh, forward at this at this point. Cross comes in though. I always see your Gerard at the back post, Moreno. Not sure which one scored that one, Moreno. 
Bailey come out off in the back. Alex Piana again. Moreno comes an Iosi cutting in. Fantastic play that time through the middle, utilizing the kind of middle play Biana. Pins that deep kind of line forward role. Picking that ball up lovely. This is probably a highlight on well poor defending. We we're a bit slack in defending at times. See some of the score lines here in the schedules, four threes, three twos. Yeah, not ideal, but that probably comes from the line. We've got Jeremy cutting in from the right here. Rejo. Slots it away. 33 year old up for uh, Pereira, who kind of like the linchpin of that defensive midfield. You can now see Foyth on the right. It's Paul into Santi. Suarez. Another great goal. You see there, what, six players in the box at that time there? Is, is anyone want to, what I'm trying to achieve? Overloading that box, the opposition. Why play? Why players with great creativity, great crossing ability, getting that ball in? We'll get your goals and hopefully assists all day long. Yep, so take a look at the, the squad stats. Start with the goals as always. Gerard Moreno, 39 appearances, 28 goals, 4 assists. Not bad at all, not a bad return. Just behind him is Bayerna, 39 appearances, 16 goals, 8 assists. I'd like to say, we had a slow start to the season. Both Moreno and Bayerna weren't really clicking and firing. I made a few adjustments, a few games in, and this, this was the result. Suddenly so started scoring. Found that kind of natural flow and got it working. Perez picked up a kind of a fairly decent 13 as well from that wide position. Although I'd probably, in real time, I think Perez and Biena would probably swap positions. Biena on the left and Perez acting as that deeper forward role. Um, Pasquale was out on loan. Perejo, not bad with 10 goals. I think free kick taker, penalty taker, set piece specialist. Uh, I'll be all with eight, six or six or so. Very much. Your front men scoring the goals. Got no sign of uh, Jeremy Pino there. He picked up four. Um, but out and out winger. Not too, not too bad for that one. Doesn't go for that great finishing anyway, but great pace. Assist wise, then 18 goals. Sorry, 18 assists for Pino. I think that's where he come into his, his element. Fantastic number of assists after the season. Four goals as well. So 22 uh, goal assists for the season. Not a bad return. Perez, definitely an all rounder. Not only did he pick up 13 goals, but also 14 assists. I think that comes from the ability to cut in from the left-hand side as well. Probably give him a lot more goal-scoring opportunities, but to pick up 14 assists as well as 13 goals, fantastic, fantastic return. Tarat with 11 assists in the DM position. 10 for Pereho and 10 for Dan Juma. 8 for Biena. Then you got your Pedreza, you know, Foyth and Fives and stuff like that. Maybe I didn't utilise the fullbacks enough. Uh, I think I could have maybe got a bit more out of maybe uh, like of Foyth, um, Pedraza, things, uh, things like that. So, yeah. Could be a bit of a scope there to tweak things if you take the static up. Look at the fullback situation. Maybe kind of make them a little bit more aggressive if you want in certain situations. But overall, happy with those stats and happy with the team performed and finished third in the league. So the tactic then, Marcelino is 4-4-2. Start off with the clear team instructions. Positive mentality has to be attacking with. I've gone for fairly narrow. Although we do like the use of wide men, I don't want them too spread out, making kind of two outrageous passes. Maybe if I was to tweak this again, I would maybe have this set it fairly wide. But for this kind of tactic, I just went for fairly narrow. To maintain that kind of um, position, if you like, and doing them drifting out too far away. I still want to maintain a little bit of kind of closeness, if that makes sense, a little bit more like a tight unit. Approach player, passing to space, utilising those wide men, obviously strikers up front as well, dropping into the space for them, like said Perez, Pino, Alcamac on the right as well. You see, you've got to utilise that, I think, in a 4-4-2. Play out of defence, control the ball, but first and foremost, low crosses, work ball in the box, passing shortness, uh, sorry, passing directness, I've gone for shorter, Again, you could maybe increase that a little bit if you want to go a little bit more direct. I just found that this worked how I wanted it perfectly. Tempo off, going for slightly higher. Again, you can maybe increase that against certain teams. Same with kind of passing directness. Maybe it might be worth against the better teams, going a little bit more direct to try and maybe break their kind of press or exploit that little space kind of with the better teams coming on, a bit more aggressive. 
certainly probably found some of the lesser teams and maybe sat back a little bit more and we got hit on the counter maybe a bit too much. So something worth thinking about, something worth tweaking if you do take uh, take on this tactic. And couple that with running defence, we have to have to be aggressive with those wingers that we have. They're that kind of strike force. Got to be aggressive and in the EA opposition's face. In transition then, it is a counter press and counter. Distribute quickly, distribute to the centre box and take short kicks. Out of possession, now I do tweak this as I go, I did experiment with a few, certainly in the early stages of the season. At the moment, I've got this on mid-block and high defensive line. Against weaker opposition, should we say, or certainly just to maybe try in the opening few minutes, I would probably have this on higher press and much higher defensive line. Really kind of force the players up the pitch. Probably have to step up more off at this point if I was using this style. So against weaker teams or teams you should have the advantage over certainly possession wise I'll maybe kind of uh, deploy this style against the actual Barcelona's Real Madrid Sevilla Atletico Madrid's I'll maybe kind of drop that back to kind of more, more of a mid block high defensive line maybe step up more on to kind of give you that kind of defensive step into the into the midfield try and win that ball back but overall try both if you, do, like you see if you take this tactic up worth experimenting see what works best for you I just found majority of the time that the, the, the aggressive approach worked much better. So I had a high press on, high, uh, much higher defensive line, trigger press much more often, prevent short goal, give distribution, get stuck in. And I'll probably have that off at this at this stage. So it's get stuck in. If I was to bring that back against bigger teams, I'll probably go for kind of a high defensive line, mid block, and step up more. Like I say, experiment if you take on this tactic. Let me know what you, you, know, what you think, what you decide, what you find best. I just found overall, as a general tactic, this one just seemed to get the better results. But I think there, was, there is times or certainly moments when I would certainly bring that back. You see, it probably against your kind of top four or five teams in the league. So team instructions out the way. Quite simply, we'll go through the team uh, player instructions there now. Louise Jr., super keeper uh, on support. No further PIs on this one. Boyth, I've gone for a fullback on support. Maybe again, depending on who you're playing, away, home, if you want a slightly more aggressive tactic, or you want to make this even more aggressive than it, than it probably is, or maybe have these full backs on attack, um, maybe wing back on support, something along those lines, experiment. I don't think I've got the best out of the full backs. Boyth, I mean, is probably a defensive minded anyway, to be quite honest with you. So I think that probably suited him. Five assists, but decent passing stats. Fairly decent tackling as well for a for a right back. So I've probably done the job that I wanted them to do, be more defensive. While Pino and Biena, uh Tarat in midfield were being the aggressors. But experiment, let me know what you think. Defense wise, I've just gone for two centre backs. I think with the aggression up front and the wings, I want my back line just to be awfully solid and controlled and sensible. Probably didn't like that uh, Abby all. But yeah, he hasn't got great passing stats, so he's ever going to make a good ball playing defender. Probably not. So I've kept it simple. Basically, if I want the defense to get the ball and play it, just those short, simple passes out to my more creative uh, players, i.e., either wing backs or sorry, full backs or Parejo in as a deep line playmaker there. The draws are again a full back on uh, support. Again, maybe could have made a little bit more aggressive. I think he has obviously complete wing back or wing back on attack or support. But experiment, make say, see how we get on. I would maybe use it in certain situations, maybe not in others. I think it, there's enough aggression in the team further up the pitch. But was it maybe a waste of his of his talents and kind of skills, if you like? So for these guys, just sit narrower, tackle harder. Should be the same for both. Certain defenders, just tackle harder, very simple. So moving into the midfield then. Start with the kind of centre midfield. Pereira, 33 years old, but certainly the linchpin of the, of the team. Um, almost like your Busquets was for Barcelona and after that 4 3 3. He is probably their version. 36 years old, sorry, or there two or three years off him. Still a fantastic player, fantastic uh, stats. Not obviously now blessed with great pace, but when you've got passing like this, vision, teamwork, positioning, composure, anticipation, first touch. Like you see, get that ball, 
Patriots as well, comes able to get the ball, dictates tempo, stops play, dwells on the ball. Just the perfect kind of uh, midfielder to get hold of that, look around, bang, make your pass, whether that's the gate to the wide men, through the middle. And like you see, he picked up 10 goals through his free kick and set piece taken. Like you see, a perfect, more, more perfect for the role, to be quite honest with you. Deep line playmaker for me on defend, just perfect for him. Partner with him then, I had Tarat as a centre midfielder on attack. Getting that aggression through the middle of the pitch. Overload those wide areas with your two forwards, your centre midfielder coming in, your wingers attacking, Pino, slightly wider on the right, Vienna, although in this case it was Perez, one of the highlights. Putting in as well, creating all sorts of problems, overloading that uh, opposition defence. You can see we, we scored goals, we created chances, it worked perfectly. So if anyone's got simply got to tackle harder, I think he did a really good job. 11 assists from that midfield role. Two goals. Maybe expect a little bit more, but yeah, long shots are not great. Finishing not great either, but good passing, good vision. He picked up, uh, picked up those assists perfectly. Maybe a box to box. If I was to change this again, maybe. Something maybe slightly uh, less aggressive with a bit more defensive capability as well. We did link a lot of goals. So I think he could maybe change into a box to box. I don't think that would, that would be a bad option if I was to tweak a couple of little things as well. So moving on to our wide men, definitely the kind of bread and butter of this team, I think, of this 4-4-2 formation. In this case, we had Pino. I mean, look at them stats there. Fantastic player, only 22 years old. Loads of time to develop and get even better. And I didn't have training schedules on here either. So if I had been training, I probably could even be yeah, a lot better than what you see now after one season. Definitely the right man for the job here. Great pace, acceleration, flair, dribbling, crossing's not too bad. Could focus on that if you were to take on this tactic. On, on the other side, Bayerna. Now that was the idea anyway, but I think the assistant manager was dropping Perez here. So this might not be kind of reflective of actually where he was playing. Great passing, great technique. He's not the quickest, but not too bad either. Great finishing. Definitely like an inside forward. But I did have him, I mean, I think in a, the real world as well, he may be sat slightly higher. If kind of Pino was here, it probably would be looking a bit more asymmetrical. Yeah, so definitely a, a good inside forward, I think be here. But the assistant manager probably had these swapped around. So I end up with kind of Perez on the left. Again, not a bad option. Pierce not fantastic, but yeah, cuts inside from the right wing. Perez has not the traits either. That's why I want him as a deep line forward. But 12 goals, 10 assists. Can't argue. Great dribbling. Great flair. Good technique. Work rate as well. Work well. So these guys tackle harder. No additional kind of uh, PIs for these. Nothing uh, additional. So up top then, I think uh, Bienna in the end was in this position. 16 goals. 8 assists from here as well. Like I say, with these passing as well. Again, probably an ideal deep line forward as well, quite honest with you. False 9 maybe. But deep line forward seemed to work really well. Partnering in with Moreno. No extra instructions from Moreno, just as a portrait on attack. 28 goals. You can see, not blessed with that pace either, but great finishing, great first touch, great determination, great off the ball, great work rate, <laughs> great passing himself. Uh, he ended up with four assists, but 28 goals. Bit of a crackling uh, return for that season now, I think. So overall, really happy with this tactic. Like I say, that, that's it for me now uh, for this tactic. Like say, if you're enjoying the series, please drop a like, subscribe if you can. Get down in the comments as well. Will you take this tactic on? Are you going to change anything? What do you do differently? I think there's one or two things I certainly would. Wing backs, box to box midfielder maybe. It certainly change the to a mid block. A little bit more maybe in line with how Vill uh, Villarreal play. But you can say, I'm going to join this series. Jose Marino probably will be up next. It's a bit of a change from the 4 2 3 ones. That's why I've chucked this one in. So I'll leave you with that. Uh, that's all for me. Thanks. Bye for now.